All right, Mr. Ahmed here for the day one of our factoring unit. The reason why we're going over our factoring is A, it's a good review of last year's algebra material, and B, throughout some of our problems throughout the rest of the year, we are going to have to solve some quadratics and factor in order to find the solutions. So, and we did do this in distance learning last year for the most part at the end of our intermediate algebra course. So some of this is gonna definitely be very helpful for us to practice. You will use it a ton next year in Algebra 2 as well. So just for our warm-up here, the question says, what are the factors of the constants of each polynomial? So when we talk about the constant, the constant is just the number, all right? It doesn't have a variable with it. So 8 is the constant. So I'm just going to circle that. That's our constant, 8. So what are the factors of 8? So that means what times what is 8? And I can think of the easiest one. Anything times itself is 1. So one pair of the factors is 8 and 1. Another 1 it would be 4 times 2. So those are the factors of 8. 8 and 1 and 4 and 2. Um, the next one, a little bit different. It is a negative. So technically, we would have to multiply a positive and a negative number in order to get a negative. So I'm just going to kind of circle the 6 for right now. And we'll come up with factors of 6. So we could have 6 and 1. One Now to get a negative 6, one of those would have to be negative. It could be the, either be the 6 that's negative or the 1 that's negative. So we'd have options there. And then we also have 3 and 2. And again, to get a negative 6, one would have to be a positive. The other would have to be a negative. The choice would be yours. Okay. Now for the factors of our last constant, that is 12. So we have 12 and 1, 12 times 1. 4 and 3, and also 6 and 2. So those would be the factors of 12. As we work with our polynomials, this term here, greatest common monomial factor, is the greatest common factor, and it's also a monomial because it's going to have a variable involved with it. All right? So in order to be a greatest common factor monomial, it must be a factor of both terms. So in this case... We have the 3 and the 9. So it has to be a factor of 3 and 9. So when we look for these factors between these two monomials, we have to figure out what goes into 3, what goes into 9. First, we'll look at the leading coefficient or the coefficient of each term. So that's 3 and 9. So the coefficients are what we'll look for first. All right. Then we'll look at the variables. All right. So... First, 3 and 9. Well, what is the greatest common factor of 3 and 9? Well, let's see. What times what's 3? We have 1 and 3. That's it. And then the factors of 9 are 9 and 1 and 3 times 3. So the greatest common factor is the one factor that is common between both, and it's the biggest one. So the greatest common factor of these is 3. Um, the only other one that was common was 1. All right, We can't use the 9 because 9 does not go into 3. Now we look at the variables. So what do the x squared and the x have in common? When we look at the variables, we take the one with the smallest exponent. x to the nothing is x to the first. Okay, So we would have the smallest exponent, which is x to the first, which is just an x. So... The greatest common monomial factor is these two things together, 3x. 3x goes into 3x squared, and 3x goes into 9x. Okay? So, sometimes we can factor a monomial out of the polynomial. It needs to be the greatest common factor of every term. So, when we look at the greatest common fa monomial factor, we look at both the coefficients and the variables. We factor it out and see what's left over, okay? So when I look at the first one, first thing I'm looking at is the coefficients, 5 and 2. So what goes into 5 and 2? Well, 5, 2, 2 doesn't go into 5. I mean, I have the factors of 5, which is 1 and 5. I have the factors of 2, which is 2 and 1. Only thing that's common is a 1, so we're taking out a 1, which we usually refer to as nothing. Now the variables, the smallest exponent between x squared and x, they have to be the same variable. x squared and x is x. We can take out an x, or we could also refer to that as a 1x. When we take it out, factor it out, we are dividing it by both 
term. So I'm dividing an x here. If I take 5x squared divided by x, we have to remember what happens with our exponents. When we divide, we subtract, okay? What we're factoring out goes outside the parentheses, which is just an x or a 1x. When I take 5x squared divided by x, I am left with 5x. If I multiply these together, I would end up with what I started with, which is 5x squared. Then we had our minus sign in between, so our minus sign stays. 2x divided by x, the x's would cancel. You'd subtract the exponents, 1 minus 1, 0, and I'm left with a 2. So to check your answer, all you would do is distribute this again, and you should end up with what we started with. Okay. So if I distribute it back out, I'd have 5x squared minus 2x. All right, next one. Let's see, our coefficients. We have a 6, a 2, and a 1. Well, with the 1, the biggest thing I can take out is a 1. So I'm taking out a 1 again, or just whatever we have left. Now this time we're looking at b's. Every term has a b in it. The smallest exponent is b to the second. So my greatest common factor is 1b to the second. Okay, so I'm taking out a b squared. And then I'd have to divide all three terms by b to the second. Okay, that's how I'm factoring it out is by dividing it out. So 6 over 1 is 6. Subtract the exponents. 4 minus 2 is 2, so I have a b squared left. 3 minus 2 is 1. Our 2 is just still a 2, so we have 2b to the first or just b. And then here, b squared divided by b squared, anything divided by itself is 1. Okay? Next one, what goes into 3 and 24? 3 does. That's the greatest common factor between 3 and 24. When I look at the x's, the smallest exponent is to the third, so I take out an x to the third. So I'm taking out 3x to the third. That goes outside the parentheses. Okay. Left inside the parentheses would be what's left over. 3 divided by 3 is 1. I'm not going to write the 1. 4 minus 3 is 1, so I have an x to the first. Now, if I multiplied that back out, I'd have 3x to the fourth. Well, that looks good. 24 divided by 3 is 8. x to the third divided by x to the third. Those cancel each other off. 3 minus 3 is 0, so I just have an 8. If I multiplied that back out with the distributive property, I'd have 24x to the third, which is exactly what we started with. Okay, our next one. Greatest common factor. Let's see here. I have 14 and 21. 7 goes into both those. That's the biggest one. My smallest exponent for the y's is just y to the first. So I'm taking out a 7y. I'm not going to write down that I'm dividing this time. I'm going to do this in my head. 14 divided by 7 is 2 y squared divided by y is just a y, so I have a 2y left. 21y divided by 7y is just a 3. Okay, so you don't have to write your dividing it every time if you're able to do it in your head. So what I want you to do is push pause, try the next three on your own. All right, hopefully you had some success on these next three. So again, I'm going to still write out my greatest common factor. What is it? My greatest common factor is... Well, what goes into 25 and 30? That's a 5. Uh, my smallest exponent for the n's is 5n, so I'm taking out a 5n. That goes outside the parentheses. Divide both terms by 5n. 25 divided by 5 is 5. n to the third divided by n is n to the second. 30 divided by 6 is a plus sign in between, 6. And n over n cancels, so that is just going to be a 6. Next one, GCF. 2, 8, and 4. I got a 2. All right. Uh, there's not an x on this term, so I can't take out an x. The only thing I can take out is a 2. So I'm dividing every term by 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. We still have our x squared. 8 divided by 2 is 4. Still have our x. And 2 divided by 2 is a 1. If you distribute it back out, you can check your work. You would end up with what we started with. Now this one. 9 and 18. GCF is 9. The smallest exponent for the z is just the z, so I'm taking out a 9z. All right, when we divide, 9 divided by 9 is 1. 
our z is just to the first power. So I have a z left over. Minus sign in between. 18 divided by 9 is 2. The z's cancel. All right, there's two challenge problems here. Uh, again, if you want to give these a shot, hit pause and come back to check the answer. All right, GCF is, well, 10 and 4. The GCF for the coefficients is 2. I have an x in common and a y in common, so I can take out a 2xy. Okay, so 2xy is coming out. have to divide that by both terms. 10 divided by 2 is 5. X squared over X is just an X. Y squared over Y is just a Y. Minus 4 divided by 2 is 2. The XY's cancel. And we got it. All right, the last one. 6, 12, 20. What goes into 6, 12, and 20? I think 2 is it. And that's the biggest one for our coefficients. We can take out a 2. Smallest exponent for the A is the A. Smallest for the B appears to be a B to the second. So I'm taking out a 2AB squared. Divide all the terms by 2AB squared. 6 over 2 is 3. That goes inside. A to the third over A is A to the second. B squareds cancel. Plus sign in between here. 12 over 2 is 6. Let's see. We have A squared over A, so an A left. B squareds cancel. Minus... 20 divided by 2 is 10. A is cancel. B squared is cancel, so it's just a 10. All right, that's it for the greatest common factor. Have a good rest of the day.